How many have already seen this particular image here on RT News? China echoes call to make East Jerusalem capital of independent Palestine. Well, you know, this is what really gets me. All this news is going on here at the same time. Of course, President Trump calling East, uh, West Jer or Jerusalem Israel's capital, not specifying East or West. And yet at the same time, one of many videos that we have done speaking about uh, already a two-state solution has already been done, a secret deal. Saman Tov, who was interviewed by my wife as well as myself, I've interviewed him. But just as a reminder, let's take a look at this video once again and hear a little bit about what Saman Tov says here. Then, then Yehuda Glick, he's saying that there's no more two states, Israel is one state, but you, you told my husband before that they have signed a two-state solution. Do you think, how did that happen? I want to hear it briefly about that again, but do you think that there is some kind of secret deal that it's not being put up to public and there is some kind of secret deal going on uh, and something is plotting against the Jewish people? Definitely. You know, several years ago, and I can't remember the exact year, <clears throat> I was in a Bible study here in Jerusalem with several people and, and something unique happened during that Bible study. They received a phone call and they never answered the phone. <clears throat> and I was surprised when the wife of the family got up and went and answered the phone. She also happened to be a lieutenant in the police. Mm -hmm. And she gets, she's talking to this person and she goes off into another room. And a few minutes later comes back and asks us to pray for this woman that she just talked to, who was very much in distress. And she had been invited into a, the boardroom in the Knesset, Ariel Sharon, and a number of high, high, high level dignitaries from many nations were there and they reviewed maps of a future Palestinian state the total surrender of the city of Jerusalem, and it was agreed upon. It was, I believe, it was agreed upon prior to. This was a formality. Mm -hmm. So the whole point, as you're seeing here, friends, is that Jerusalem was already divided. And as Simon Tov was saying, a complete surrender of Jerusalem. That's because a United Nations force will take control of Jerusalem. So when the Chinese say East Jerusalem is Palestinian, it is. It's already been determined. I don't say it is because of my desire to see that. So I say it because we already know this has happened. And West Jerusalem supposedly is going to be the capital of Israel. So what President Trump is saying is not something that's not already been agreed upon. It's already been done. What, I mean, people are just really being duped into all this. This is news from yesterday, but I didn't catch it myself till I saw it on Already Happen on Lorenzo's uh, page there. US F-22 was hampering Russia's uh, Su-25 jets from providing cover for aid convoy. According to the reports there that we were seeing on Twitter originally before seeing RT's report here, is that the F-22s fired flares as a warning to the Russian uh, planes there that were flying, uh, coming over to the eastern side of the Euphrates River, where the U.S. has forbidden Russian planes to fly in this area. Talk about a hot spot and talk about problems coming up in the very near future between Russia and the U.S., this is certainly an area of contention. Now, Russia has been pulling their forces out, that may not be such a smart move at the rate that the U.S. is going about. But I'm very concerned, as I said before, that Russia is moving their, their troops, their military, much of their military out of Syria, and that may pave the way for the Arab nations to come against Israel. So, you know, who knows? I think I put Russia in an awkward position to stand up for Israel because they are allies, but at the same time, would they even stand up for Israel if the Arab nations come against Israel? I don't think so. So anyway, that being said, at the same time, CNBC is talking about while North Korea, 
the whole issue all inflamed right now at the United Nations. Russia, by the way, strongly uh, standing against the United States. Tensions ran high. Rex Tillerson said there'd be no negotiations with North Korea, no, uh, as far as any preconditions. And yet North Korea wanting to sit down to negotiate, but not without, not with this no preconditions. And Russia and China both tried to broker a deal with the U.S. and with North Korea. North Korea would stop its testing of missiles if the U.S. would stop having all these unannounced drills on its borders. You know, the U.S. has always talked about having drills once a year with South Korea. Well, already two unscheduled drills this year uh, happened on North Korea's borders. This is what Russia and China have been very concerned about. And they feel like, according to the Russian officials, that the U.S. just wants to have a war. They're just begging for a war with North Korea, looking for a way out. No doubt, and I can see this myself as far as the economic woes of America. And we know President Trump is saying we have a 3% increase. The only problem is, I just come back from Europe, and if we got a 3% increase, it certainly is not reflecting in the exchange of the dollar. Three years ago, you could get about 20% higher of an exchange rate, whether you were trading for euros or if you were trading for Czech crowns, it is down 20% on the dollar. That's just from three years ago. I know this for a fact, friends. So I do not believe a bit when they say that their current, our economy is going up. Anyway, what we're looking at here is CNBC. They're showing here that uh, saying that while uh, China is or while the U.S. is distracted with what's going on in North Korea, China, in the meantime, is out there building more and more on these uh, disputed islands, these man-made islands. Well, if you kind of look at this one picture, I don't know how well you can see it there to the left of the screen there, but uh, of course, I'm probably shaking trying to hold this phone, make this video here, but that is runways on there and they have definitely come a long way just within the last year in building and that's the one island that we see so much of as we're seeing this story coming out in the news things of that nature there anyway that's just trying to give you a little bit of an update we are back in the united states here only for about a month and a half we will be having to go back over to europe very soon um, again so uh, do uh, pray for us and keep us in your prayers. Got a very interesting message I want to load on the Noon Institute. Hopefully I can do this Sunday night. If not, it'll be Monday. I'm going to be looking at Jeremiah chapter 10. How many of you guys think about this scripture here being a Christmas tree? Well, it's not. And we're going to get into that. And I'm not here to... Um, take one side or the other as far as uh, how people believe when it comes to Christmas. I do believe that Yeshua was never born during this time of year, uh, but you're going to be very surprised to find out what Jeremiah was really speaking of in chapter 10. And I'll give you a little hint. It has a lot to do with idolatry that Rome does. Hmm. God was warning Israel. And it has a lot to do with symbology of Christ. It's actually a crucifix. We'll get into that a little bit later. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Visit our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. And stand with us. If you appreciate the work we're trying to do here. I know we've not been super on top of things here the last few days. Trying to travel back and forth. We'll be back in the swing this week here, keeping you up to date of things that are breaking. So if you appreciate the work we do, stand with us and support the broadcast. God bless you and shalom.